Debra, after your special, your career's never been hotter. Did you ever think you'd be back on top? Yes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Awards Tour podcast. I am here with two thirds of the creative team behind Hacks. Paul, Lucia, thank you so much for being here. Um, I should say star and creative team because you're also on camera and director. Y'all have too many hyphenates I on know. this one. Yeah. There's a lot of being, like, it would yeah. take me a little while. <laughs> Emmy winners, and you know. Uh, first of all, congratulations on season four. That Thank is you. Uh, great news. I have to ask, with a show like this, I mean, I know it is a new sort of like era of TV, especially from when you guys sort of became, but that's still like a great moment to know that like, hey, the stories are continuing and that they're still here with you as you continue to keep doing the show and have all the success. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's especially now, it feels like, especially for comedy, to be yeah. able to have multiple seasons of a show feels rare. And, you know, we haven't, been able to finish telling the story yet, but in the hope and that we do get to finish the story the way that we want to. I mean, what I mean, just creatively, like the ultimate dream is to be like, here's the story, here's we want to how we want to tell it, and here's how we want it to end. I mean, that's creatively, yeah, the the unbelievable dream that hopefully we will get to have. Yeah. So by the time this comes out, season three is already already out and premiered, and folks are watching it. But I want to take it back a little bit to where you mm. started this mm. year. With first of all, that opening shot, I think, is mm -hmm. like something that we didn't maybe get at the time to really sort of like live in. I would love for you when you were coming back for season three, yeah. how much you knew going into this, where you wanted it to go, and what was the best sort of like happy surprise that you discovered on the course of season three in the writer's room? And Paul, I'll start with you. Sure. We, we knew that this season was gonna be her quest for late night. We knew that when we pitched the show actually, that she was gonna be going after this mm. Herculean task of getting that chair. Um, and so we knew we were going back to Vegas. We were gonna be revisiting a lot of our ensemble. And we also knew pretty early on in the writing that we wanted to have a twist in the end. Mm. But I think it was only like midway through that we realized um, exactly how, what leverage Ava would have mm. this year in the story to have the dynamic and that power shift. Yeah. Um, and so that was kind of a surprise. Figuring out what that yeah. was, we were like, that's, that's what she's gonna use to get what's hers. So I think that was probably the biggest surprise yeah. in the writing process for us. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I thought was interesting as I read is that Hannah thought that she wasn't coming back oh, after yeah. season two, which I, by the way, I would definitely be that neurotic about a show like oh. this because of course the minute you have any success, you're like, they're gonna take it away from me. Oh. But when did you sort of let Jean and Hannah know this is where your beats were going, this is where your sort of like stories were telling, and when did they find out about the sort of like twist as far as like that scene? You know, they actually, we don't tell them anything ahead of time. Wow. They just read the scripts as they get distributed. So they had no idea until they received the last script, which was probably, you know, a couple, like maybe a month or two before we started shooting the season. Wow. So Actually, yeah. Actually, I think they got that script during production oh, because yes. we wrote the finale oh, wow. over our holiday break. Yes. So, That's right. Yeah. So they didn't know. They and didn't know even until we started season three how it would end. And it's, it's this funny thing where you almost are like, you want to watch them read it or something to see yeah. their reactions, but you also don't want to because then they're like, well, something must be crazy if you're at my house and you're yeah. watching me read yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I think mostly, they, I think Hannah texted being like, oh my God, draw on the, draw on the floor. Oh, wow. um, I don't really know if we ever really talked to Jean about it. I think I think she was like ho ho ho. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, you know? yeah, maybe but the next day it it's works. It's so funny because some actors want to hear everything. They're like, tell me what's going to happen. I want to know like what to think about, but. They they like to be so, they it's almost like they're the audience too yeah. and they're wow. they're almost like you know they're reading the scripts as if they're watching the show and it's kind of a fun way to do it and I also think like as a performer of course everybody has their own approach to how they approach a character uh, in in their storytelling as an actor but I think for them they like to just know what the character knows as they're unfolding so mm -hmm. so they don't want to be ahead of it and then be projecting something earlier that is only the knowledge that the character would have later yeah. you know they like to really be in the moment in every way so um it's kind of fun to have them watch it see it read it um Live later it. in the process yeah I mean, and you guys, season three, I think I've seen it from a lot of people. They feel like you guys leveled up, like they feel like you took it to next level, which is saying something considering there's three Emmys between the two of you. Mm -hmm. And also all three seasons are certified fresh. One of the highest rated comedies like we've ever had on a show as far as like each season being so well. What has been the most interesting fan reaction that y'all have gotten about this show since like, again, like I think post Emmys, especially with y'all's absolutely hilarious Emmy speech, <laughs> like there's probably a lot more people coming up to you being like, oh my God, this is great. Or probably you and the two of you You're together. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they 
they know that you're in it, be like, she did it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do think people do know who Lucia is, but I think when when Jen, Lucia, and I are all together, it is. I think sometimes they're like, oh, that's that's the guy from because sometimes people watch a show and they don't know the creative yeah, team behind it. They don't know who works mm-hmm. on it or writes it or show runs it. So it's it's nice in that way for them to, I, I think, see reactions that they might not necessarily get totally. because you know they're they're not walking down. Marchmont and hearing people be like, <laughs> I love this show, you know? Marchmont is the greatest neighborhood, though. It's a great neighborhood. <laughs> it it's is a great, great neighborhood. neighborhood. Yeah. Um, so have you had an interesting fan reaction to someone like, like, or a line where they're quoting it back to you or a moment? I mean, trying to think. I mean, we've had some really sweet fan reactions of people who, like, share with us, like, what yeah. they're going through and what the show oh, has wow. meant for them. Whether they, they're someone who works in the industry or someone who's just had you know, um, a personal sadness in their life and it's like been a thing that's helped them get through it. And it's oh, like wow. so, it's always so... I think that usually is the most touching, touching. stuff. Wow, that's yeah. or, or sometimes people who feel that they've been able to learn something about themselves as a result of the characters, whether yeah. it's coming from, you know, Ava's openness with her bisexuality and that making people maybe question their own sexuality mm. in, a, in a really amazing way. And it only, you know, of course, helps people, if it, it, if it ever can help people feel like they helps them understand themselves more. Mm. I think that's a really cool thing too. That is so dope. For season three, you guys brought in, I mean, the heavy hitters <laughs> on both the guest stars and also recurring characters returning, but like, look, J. Smith Cameron, yeah. we have Christopher Lloyd, mm-hmm. Tony Goodwin, a Goldwin, who you're doing exactly what you should do when you have <laughs> Tony Goldwin on set. Uh, <laughs> Christina, uh, Christina Hendricks. Chris, Christina Hendricks. I, I thought that, uh, I want to talk specifically about that. <laughs> okay. If you're gonna bring Tony and Christina on set, I think you have to just make characters thirst after them, and I love that y'all <laughs> decided to do that. Uh, First of all, were they written with them in mind? Did you know you were gonna be leaning into the thirst because you're like, yes, this is what the audience wants to see? You know, I think they were both characters that innately would have a certain amount of um, appeal, sexual yes. appeal mm. to them. Um, and those two actors both came to mind, I guess I would say. Um, I hope that they don't feel typecast by that. But, um, <laughs> but sometimes fine. when you're beautiful people, <laughs> it's yeah. like that seriously. You know. There yeah. was story first. You know, we <laughs> thought about that before we figured out who could potentially play them. But okay. I will say they did fit the bill. Yeah, they, really yeah. brought, they really brought it. Listen, I'm sorry. No, I'm I'm known for this at this point in the podcast. When when Deborah Vance leans into Tony, I was like, yes. Like yes. I, it was like it was like watching a touchdown at the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then kind of on the other side with Hannah and Ava with the Christina character, the betrayal of thirsting after someone that yes. you're then revolted by. Yes. Who, where did that idea come up in the writers' room? Because I think that is actually a very LA thing where you assume everybody is kind of playing on the same field and then someone says something and they're just like oh no no like they say like oh I'm really really into Elon Musk you're like what happened (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think that that kind of came from the idea of wanting Ava to really question her morals her moral code um, and you know, in that whole episode, it's really about her, it's about class and about mm. her trying to figure out where she she feels like she's one of the working people, but in so many ways she's not. Um, and so for her to kind of analyze that in a lot of different ways, and one of the ways would be in the bedroom. Yeah. And I think that's, um, and then it, when it came to the idea of whether or not this woman, well, she wanted to like, sexually objectify her, but yes. then when it came to, I was gonna piss on you because you were a caddy. <laughs> now that's a little bit more specific and crazy, yeah, but yeah, yeah. it felt somehow logically like it needed to go there. <sighs> I'm so glad that you go there because the places y'all go with this show and they're always just like, Throw away lines. Some of the things that I find the most shocking thing in the mm-hmm. world, y'all just throw away and pretend like nobody pays attention to it. And I'm like, we have to talk for 20 minutes about the Republican wanting to pee on her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Ava's like, listen, I would happily let a socialist pee on me. And Good so to know. that's, you know, like yeah. that's, that's where her moral code goes. Is she can only, I forget what it's called. There's something where you're, attracted to people based on like their intellect. That's yeah. a certain kind of... That's not demisexual, right? That's when you have to have a love experience. Maybe that's... No, there's something about, I think, being intellectually stimulated. I mean, I don't if remember. the nerds do it for you, we'll just put it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I'm going to blank it and then you can ADR it later. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this very commonly no thing we'll that I know right very well. Here. Yeah, we'll when put it's, it right it's called, here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right your mouth. It's yeah. called... It's called yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah. And that's, you know, I think it t- turns out maybe yeah. Ava has a little bit of, not necessarily that, but like uh, an attraction to a certain kind of good person. And yeah. and that I think also some people, it, it's not across the board. Some people are able to 
distinguish. Have sex or whatever, get peed on by somebody who, <laughs> with whose ideals they don't match up with, but not Ava. And I think that's uh, important for us to know. Yeah. <laughs> and for I, some reason. <laughs> I think it's actually important something to know to look at where she sort of goes into this this whole season because one of the things we explored I think in season two is how many licks she can take. Yeah. Yes. Um, like I, I, I very much felt bad for her mm-hmm. and through significant portions of season two and I was just like, girl, do you like getting hit? Yeah. Um, whereas in this season, I think she's um, finally pushing some of the punches yes. on, on her own and I will go ahead and say because it's now out, the last episode, mm-hmm. like we really do just have to give that moment in the sun because people have talked so much about it. Like set that up, like basically writing that is a mm-hmm. tennis match between yeah. these two titans. And I know you're in the writer's room and everyone's sort of doing it together, but you directed that she episode. Directed you did, directed yes. that episode. Yeah. How did you know like where you wanted to shoot it? When did the dialogue really sort of solidify? Yeah, I mean, I think that that was in a way it's what we've been building the whole show to is yeah. this showdown. Um, where Ava is saying, yeah, I know that we're not equals, but you owe me a certain thing that you're not giving to me based out of your own fear. And Ava and Deborah's, you know, saying, this is just the society we live in. It is misogynistic. They want to feel more comfortable with a guy, and that's just what it is. And I think part of Ava's frustration is, is you know I'm the best person for the job because in episode 302, you had me come back yeah. to help you write it, and it's the only reason you even got this show. And also you're newfound fame is as a result of the work we've done together. So literally, you do owe me this. But also, I she feels like through our relationship, I would have hoped that you would learn that society doesn't necessarily always function that way. And it could, there is another way. There mm. is a way that you platform me, you support me, and we do this together. And Deborah just can't meet her there. And I think that's part of the hurt, um, in addition to saying that she's willing to lose step Ava, which I think is the most brutal gut punch she could hear. Yeah. And what Hannah does on the other side of that is just heartbreaking. Yeah, what I mean, we, I was just gonna say that we we thought about Ava turning and, and betraying Deborah very early on, but the, the argument that they have where Ava says, don't you get it? It'll be better because of our relationship. Like what we do together is good because of our relationship. That, that argument I think was one of the things we wrote and rewrote and rewrote the yeah. most. Wow. Because there was so much to be said and so much to wrap your arms around, but it also was, it's a little bit of the, the point of the show, which is like these are two women who, when they find each other, are better with each other and better as a team. So that that was a really that was a lot of a lot of thought went into that one. Mm-hmm. I, I have to add this too because again, it is a um, there are the three of you that are that are leading this on the creative side, but the two of you have been working together in so many iterations, and I kind of not to put too much meta mm-hmm. into it. Mm-hmm. There has to be it, it's not you're not the only sort of like partner crew, but it is different. Usually, you don't see it with two writers together the mm-hmm. way that you all sort of do it. Was that always the choice for you? I mean, like this is going back to to like the UCB days and something mm-hmm. like that. But when did you know it's like, no, we really want to do this together because you've made that a beat through Broad City, through like so many other things. Yeah. I mean, we started working together before we became a couple. Yeah. Um, so we always knew, I think that we made the other one funnier and I always want to make her laugh. So it makes me the best comedian I can be because yeah. my goal is just to make her laugh and she's the smartest audience <laughs> I have. Oh, nice. So I think that always made our work better. We elevated each other's work because we were, I think when you're making comedy particularly, you want to have fun. And when you're doing it with the person that tickles you the most and who you want to make laugh the most, you have the most fun. Yeah. So I think that kind of, it was like an undeniable thing for us. But then it does bleed into the work. I do think like in any work, you do see the people behind it. Mm. I think no matter what the show, it's like there are parts of the people that are writing the show. And that's all the writers. Of course, we have a great room of writers. and. Jen Stasky, who created the show with us, is part of that too. But it is a really autobiographical show because it's about what it means to have a relationship um, that's very profound and Mm. also one that's um, generative, that you're creating with that person and what that means. Because, Mm. you know, it's it's different than maybe two people who are both lawyers or something, you know? And maybe maybe two lawyers who are partners in crime also have a really deep and profound connection. Nobody you never watch that show. Well, they <laughs> watch a lot of suits. That's, that's true. true. Right? Yeah, you know but what? it's the secretary and the lawyer. It's never mm. the lawyer and the lawyer, man. Yeah. I mean, that was kind of a love story between them in a way. Okay, okay, fair. Yeah. I mean, listen, I'm I don't sorry. Know. I, didn't I know only somebody. saw season one. I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were six seasons deep on suits. No, no, no you're probably right. Yeah, you're probably right. But it is really fun. It is really fun. No, no, and look, I having watched it and seen how much you both talk mm. about the show, because you, you host the podcast yes. with Jen, you also do the after show. Yes. Um, 
I feel like yeah. it's interesting when you have writers like yourselves that are so intricately involved in the show, the way y'all talk about it and discuss it, like it just adds so much more depth. I loved your conversation where you talked about the scene with Kayla uh, in the in the plane. Mm-hmm. That, looking at where you speak to her, how you speak to her in the opening like parts of season one and the first episodes of season one, mm-hmm. that sort of like, dismissive tone to the way you're talking to her in that yeah. moment of season three, that is such a beautiful and like incredible arc. I'd love for you to talk about... Thanks. Uh, it's Megan, how she is sort yeah. of like the two of y'all brought the, those two together. Because was that something you knew from the beginning? I don't know that we knew we were going to go there. I mean, we knew that we wanted, we knew that we wanted to have this like comedic duo with the two of them, and they are sort of like a hard comedy version of Deborah and Ava in a way because yeah. they are work wives. You know, yeah, they yeah. work together and they, you know, they drive each other crazy. And yes, in the beginning, he is really put upon, and <laughs> it's so fun for Jimmy to be driven crazy by by Meg, by Kayla. But um, I think what was really cool was when we discovered this season and writing it that like her outside of the box crazy ideas are kind of the thing you need to succeed, especially in show business. Sometimes you just need to do the wild thing. And someone like Jimmy, who's a little bit more tightly wound, a little bit more straight laced, like wouldn't be bold enough to like try and get someone attached to a biopic (laughs) to get him out of the run. Like (laughs) all these crazy ideas. And it's like, well, yeah, you need Someone like Jimmy, who's a little bit more by the book, needs yeah. somebody like that who has vision and who's like bold. And they're both kind of nepo babies. And yeah. Jimmy really wants to prove himself and show that he can do it in spite of his dad. Whereas Kayla's like, use your power. Use your privilege. <laughs> yeah. no, lean you, into it. She would definitely have a hoodie that says nepo baby. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. With, she does. The, with she does. the like uh, Stanley Cup sticker. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things I think is interesting is as Jimmy stands up for Deborah and has those walkout moments that he has throughout both a little bit in season two, but definitely in season three. I think it's their relationship that lets him do that because the sort of like by by the book aspect that he is, he would never do that. He would no. have like been like, no, I can't. This is, I'm not going to risk my reputation all this. So I, I love how they do. Um, I'm not going to do this, but I do have a question. Since there's three Emmys between you, mm-hmm. do you have an Emmy off? Do you be like, well, you know, I have the extra one. Yeah, no, this is, yeah. She's they, actually got three. Well, that's well, right. I have, she has Babysitter's Club, too. Yes. Oh, that's right. That's right. So she has way more than me. <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah. I'm so like, I need, a, I need more. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Episode, no. was it six or seven? Seven is the golf one that you six, did. Yeah, six, yeah. I directed that one. Yeah, that one. Everyone, let's look at that scene for the thirst alone. Deserve. And oh, that's kind, that's kind. <laughs> also the great acting and all yeah, the great directing yeah, yeah. and all the it great shots really it was outside all of that but <laughs> <laughs> the thirst is what gets them to watch no <laughs> but um being that you're directing on the show, I do feel that you deserve an Emmy for the fact that you have all of these improvisers mm. on set and wrangling that level of like, yeah, you're going to get the fourth funniest line, but like <laughs> still staying on schedule. How do you combat that? Because I know you allow the show to have the freedom for the improvisation, but I also know like network television has a schedule. Yeah. <laughs> Look at your face. She's like, why are you taking <laughs> no, my no, mind? No. <laughs> I, I'm happy to talk about it. Well, because it really gets into the nuts and bolts of a production, which yeah. is not sexy, but it is the way that I think you can make, you know, have to really endure the process of it to hopefully make good art, you Mm. know? And so that's not something that is necessarily sexy, but it is important to talk about. So I guess that's what my face is. I'm like, well, if you're, if you want, (laughs) I'm going to talk to it on set pranks, fast forward. I'm I'm about to get into um, the, uh, the benefits of block scheduling, block shooting. But um, yeah, I mean, we are a show that we have a very healthy budget, for sure, but we also are very ambitious in terms of what we want to accomplish. We have a lot of scenes. We have, go for things visually. We, mm. you know, we don't cross-shoot a lot, which would save a lot of time, but also doesn't look quite as good because mm. you don't, you're not able to kind of tweak the lighting and all that stuff. So, so we are very ambitious, and we try to get a lot of angles on stuff and a lot of takes, and we don't get a ton of takes. But that being said, your initial question, which is with, was about improvising, which we also want the actors to feel like they can improvise and they have the flexibility to, but we also move really fast. So um, it is a really interesting marriage of like, mm-hmm. how do you make sure that you're, everybody's feeling like you got the scripted stuff, you have some of the fun, loose stuff, maybe you discovered something on the day, but making the decision to move on to the next scene or to the next setup and being like, we got it, mm. is in a lot of ways the most stressful part of directing for me. Wow. Because it is like, you don't wanna, I don't know the phrase, I can't come up with words today, take from Peter to pay Paul or whatever <laughs> oh, that wow. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're like, oh, I wanna make sure I get what I need here. But what that means is, on the back end, you have scenes later, you're not gonna have enough time to do those. So I'm always considering like those later scenes, are they very complicated? Who are they with? 
Are there a lot, of, is there a setup or something I can lose from it? Is there a way for me to collapse the coverage a little bit? Is there a way for me to simplify the blocking? Or do I want to move through this scene so I have more time to, to work on that because I think it's a really challenging scene or, or whatever it is. So that constant um, calculation and recalculation as the time slips by yeah. is, it is really stressful. And, and I mean, there are, I think, some directors who kind of are like, I get what I, I get what I need to get and that will take the time until I get what I need to get and I totally have a lot of respect for that but I don't come from that world. Mm -hmm. We started making YouTube videos with our own money, wow. you know, that we were like saving from I was a waiter at the time and wow. he was making PowerPoint decks for a company, you know what I mean? Like we <laughs> weren't we were beautiful. And, yeah. we, beautiful and we weren't <laughs> getting money from our parents to like fund our sh our shorts. So like and then when we went into Comedy Central world like those are really quick episodes and you yeah. kind of just had to power through. So we don't come from a world of like um, excess. We come from like do the best you can with what you have and we really try to honor that. And so, yeah, I mean like getting to have people improvise, everybody feeling like they get to do their thing, but also you have respectful of the crew's time um, and just the money that it costs to go into overtime later. Like it's, it's a constant um, calculation and it's really stressful, but I think it's also what makes the show work. Yeah. And, and just to add, the reason I think that Lucia is so brilliant at it is because there are some people, I think, who, you know, it's a job, and they go in and they're like, that's good enough. And she is so not that, that mm. she is such a perfectionist. <laughs> but, but she's also not someone who's like, let's just shoot for 18 hours and go over budget yeah. and make the crew exhausted. Like, she is somebody who balances it so well so that she gets what she loves. She's like, I love this, and I'm, I feel good about it but also I'm not gonna overdo anything. So mm -hmm. she's always been a really good editor as she directs, mm -hmm. and I think that's like a really, really unique skill to have somebody who like feels purposeful about what they're doing, but also doesn't, isn't wasteful. Well, that's interesting, listening to you talk about like the PowerPoint and the waitress thing. <laughs> I think what I, what I love for you guys, because I'm, I'm gonna be honest, when I saw y'all accept your Emmys, that was really sort of my introduction sure. um, to y'all, and then I'm looking back and I'm like, oh, these, they've done so many different things and, and, and different types of comedy and different mm -hmm. shows. What do you think was the most informative work that you did prior to stepping into this world that really helped you navigate that first season to now making mm -hmm. three incredible seasons later. What was the job? What was either the person or something that came along the way that made it to where when you were in that seat, sort mm -hmm. of, you felt comfortable with it and all? I think it was making digital shorts, making stuff for YouTube. I really? think it was us yeah. because when you were when we were doing that, we were writing a sketch video. We were, if I was acting in it, she was directing. If she was acting in it, I was directing it. Wow. I mean, we're holding boom mics. We were like, we were doing it all. We taught ourselves how to edit. We taught ourselves how to color correct in, in Final Cut. Like we were doing all the things because that's what you had to do. It was yeah. just like, you we know. We couldn't pay people to do those things. I mean, you just, who has his money? You know, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just like had to, had to do it. And I think people now with videos on Instagram or whatever, they have like a different mode of doing that. But I think it's because we wore all the hats mm. and we, just wanted to hone our voice, so we just kind of made it on a shoestring budget. I think that was the best education mm -hmm. for us, and it's why we still actually feel um, really excited to collaborate with every department about what they're doing, because we like all the parts of it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And yet now we get to do it with people that are professionals. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, there's a sound right. department. They know right. what they're doing, right. so it does sound good. Facts. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, again, you just can maybe some days when you're not directing or and the scripts are already in, you can just show up and hit your mark. But I don't right. know if those days happen too often. I right. get to act on the show, so I get to do that a little bit. Yeah. It's you really do? fun. Oh, because I nice. do turn everything else off. Like, oh, when I'm acting, good. I'm like, I got to turn it off mm -hmm. and just be in the scene with Meg or Jean or whoever. And... Yeah. That's it. And you had some good scene partners this year, oh, I, yeah. I will say. Um, I want to bring it back a little bit to the incredible cast that y'all brought in. People like uh, Jay Smith Cameron and mm. Christopher Lowe. Who was the most surprising person that obviously you bring them on set hoping and anticipating that they're going to maybe in one or maybe two episodes mm -hmm. hit it out of the park, but you were like, I did not. If I my wildest dreams, I would have never expected this. The one I think of is the kid who played the hotel bellboy. Oh my Fran. god! That, yes. He's a, one of our it. writers, Pat oh, Regan. I did Pat not. Regan, yes. Yes. He is murdered. So funny. Yeah. Like I was like, are you kidding me? Are yes. you kidding me? Like yes. I don't know. I was like, I don't know who this kid is, but like put him in <laughs> he's more. He's a things. brilliant stand-up. Okay. Yeah. Wow. He's so funny. Oh, like to me, I'm like. Nobody, like, that's like, whatever, Not it's a small role, but like, he's so memorable to this season <laughs> yeah. because of how well he killed it, but maybe he's the one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We love Pat. He's yeah, He's been a writer since season one on the oh, show. Wow. Um, he's a brilliant stand-up, really funny performer. Seek Treatment with Pat and Cat. It's a great podcast. Oh, wow. um, but yeah, he's a, a great example of like, just the people that we, we love just putting 
people that we are fans of. Pat is somebody we're a fan of on the show. Love Mo Fry Pasek is another one. Oh yes, she's she in played the, finale, the makeup artist in the finale and Bulletproof, <laughs> yes. and she's doing um, Ava's makeup and. That scene was supposed to be just that, and then we added the we added the photo shoot with the pencil coming in, just oh because Mo brought so much to it. And was so mm -hmm. I mean we've worked with Mo before, and yes. she's so oh, funny. Wow. But um, it was just like great. Yeah, really great. Oh. and you know also in Bulletproof the finale, Hal Linden who plays oh, Biff yeah. Cliff, yes. yes, you know um, was so uh, there was something so grounding about his performance. He just felt so knowledgeable. He just believed everything he said. He's like, this guy has been around the block. Yeah. He knows what he's talking about. When he says something to Deborah, I'm like, that is Bible. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? And I think yeah. that actually really helped move the story along. Mm -hmm. Like when he said that, I I that is to us like the time where you can understand why Deborah did what she did. It's yeah. like this is the way it is. Of course, I think the way it show, used to be. Well, that's yeah, our show's point yeah, of view. Is yeah. like, is that how it was, or is that how it is? And yeah. I think that that's that's the gray area which in which Deborah makes that decision. But when he says that that's what it is, you tend to believe him. And I mean, he was iconic. And, yeah. I mean, he, he. I will say, and Gene would happily say this too. Gene was like, I gotta get a picture. Yeah, we gotta get a picture really? together because yeah, yeah, yeah he's an icon. Been. Like, yeah, yeah it's the icon. And yet, that's to say, you, between like just familiar faces that we love and are excited to see, to like literal icons yeah. like him and like Christopher, Lloyd, like y'all really brought it in season three. Thank you. Um, that brings me to sort of like I guess the part that we get to at the end of this is you. You've talked about how like you don't want to judge your characters. You want yeah. them to sort of like make your decisions. I'm judging so hard at the end of this finale. Oh, wow. I'm judging. What are you judging? Tell us. I'm judging. I'm judging Jean because mm. I would be more ruthless than Ava. Like I'm petty by nature, yeah. and I'm like, I wouldn't have been even as heartbroken. I would have been instantly rageful. Yeah. Like her heartbreak is actually well. something that I'm not as familiar with. That's what the therapy for. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah well, like, she comes in with rage. Exactly, yeah. when she comes back. But um, that, I think Deborah's going to need forgiveness for me in season four. I don't know. Yes. Where do y'all see it? Where do y'all see? I know you're not going to tell me anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you were in the writer's room today. We are, we are. <laughs> so so I know be, you know some well, things. now, so if you have pictures, that'd be fine. We'd um, actually love to hear that. Yeah, dude. Um, KY Jelly Wrestling between Deborah. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> <laughs> no this There's is definitely not even some happen. people would like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, this is so wrong. No. Pleasing. I, I mean, I don't know. This is why y'all have Emmys and y'all are doing the thing. But I, yeah, I feel that I want Deborah to be on her heels. Like, mm. I want her to feel. Like, you deserve this a little, and it was because you didn't trust. Like, your right, lack right. of trust is why I'm now going to punish you. Like, Ava was punished in season two. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to see. Mm. I could be wrong. Everyone laugh. Wow. What's, interesting about, <laughs> no, I mean. What's interesting about that is that in season two, Ava knew she was wrong and yeah. felt really bad about it. And I, I, I think, you know, Deborah is mm -hmm. coming into this. She still feels she was right. And mm. she, that's a difference. Yeah. Uh, and also, I think that, um, you know, feeling like this is a big moment for her and that her people are backstabbing her is also something that she's felt in the past when she was having her first go around with Late Night. Mm. So I think she's yeah. feeling a mirror experience with those two things. And I don't know if she's, well, we'll see, if she's able to mm. extend the... Um, emotional needs of her of Ava or herself to to get to a place where she feels the way that I think you feel or that we feel. I and don't I don't know. think and I don't think you're wrong. I think yeah. like what she did was really, really wrong. Yeah. But that said, if this is helpful to you, I, I do have sympathy a little bit for Deborah because she came, she like was forged in the fires of like a boys club and she yeah. came up in the system. And I think for her she says to her, I want you to be there. I want that too. Just not as my head writer, you get your foot in the door, you prove you can do it, and then we can make you head writer. Then we can make a change. But we've got to get in the door first. And I think for her, she's like, I just got to do anything I can. So I do think it was absolutely making a decision out of fear, which is sad, you mm -hmm. know? But I don't think she was doing it maliciously, even though she lied. You know, I mm -hmm. think, I don't know if it would have been any better if she'd been like, look, I really think you need to not be head writer because, you know, and she just like, come to her with honesty? I don't know. It's the lie. I, would, really I wouldn't be as rageful. I can tell you that much. Uh, like, I would yeah, still yeah. probably be mad, but I wouldn't be as rageful. Well, it's right. also still like her idea of like, I need to do this for your own good and lie to you about it. Like, yeah. Yeah, like It's the lie yeah. that is really It hard. is the lie. Yeah. It is the lie. So. It's the lie. And also partly it's like, 
Ava's like, you were so close. Yeah. You were so That's close to doing the right thing and you doubled back out of fear that is rooted in misogyny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I thought that you were past that. Yeah. And so I think it's it's a couple things. Definitely. Um, <laughs> again, maybe I'm the only one. Sign me up for Punishing you're not. Deborah. No, 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 you're, <laughs> not. <laughs> like, you're not. You're not. I, you're the not. outfits will still slay. Yeah. I yeah. want her to get her licks. All day. Speaking of which, um, I think it's interesting too, um, you're very similar to some shows where they choose to put comedy, like actual comedy bits at the forefront of what you're doing. That means you get an opportunity to have the bits, like Mm -hmm. her monologue Mm -hmm. and her moment when she's sitting behind the chair, Mm -hmm. and as well as the comedy of just the show. Do you have a favorite, like either straight joke, straight line where you just knew that it was cracking you up, one that you feel has kind of like, when you put it done and dusted with the show, be like, that was a bar. Like, <laughs> I, we yeah, wrote yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I oh, lived for that. I'm, I will always think of that as the show when I think about it. Oh gosh, that's really difficult. I know, but it's, <laughs> I'm, it's my job. It's, it's so <laughs> okay, so I, I don't know if this is the one, but there's one moment that uh, I always do laugh at is when Ava, Deborah, and Ava in the first episode of season three are talking about how they haven't been texting. And Ava's like, you know, you didn't respond to objectively funny memes. Uh-huh. And Deborah says, oh, you're talking about the yellow guy in the bush? And Ava goes, it's Homer Simpson. <laughs> Show some respect. <laughs> I don't know. That one always no, just sticks with me. I, I don't also know if like I could her old, my favorite no, of no. time. But Ava, really... Ava, Ava and Deborah, like, old woman, <laughs> you're not hip with it moments are kind of my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Ugh, I'm trying to think. It's of, really hard. It is so hard because also a lot of times my favorite jokes aren't one-liners, really. Mm-hmm. It's really hard. <laughs> yeah. You wrote the show, though, so I know. Who else would we ask? I know. <laughs> I'm like, I can't. I, mean, I also like in, in Bulletproof in the finale, you can be the woman behind the man behind the woman. I do yeah. love that joke. That I one really that. gets me. Yeah. That is like, no, this does not that work. It's so <laughs> twisted. It's yeah. like on too many levels to it even is. just be an LOL. And also, you're so tense. I think that's another thing about the last 10 minutes or so of that yes. episode is you're so, so tense. And I will say the airplane scene was actually scripted to be after that big fight, but before the double cross finale. But we found that after that big intense fight, you just couldn't laugh. It was too intense. So we ended up moving that scene earlier. Yeah, so that then you go from fight scene to Jimmy's new office scene, then to um, the gas station scene, and then right to the double cross scene. Yeah, we really had to reshape it, uh, which you know, is which we've never done. And I think do. it's a tribute to Gene and Hannah in that scene. Their performances are so raw Incredible. and so good that you're like, you're you're kind of like vibrating from it. And mm-hmm. you're like, okay, there's just a momentum to it. And I do think the Jimmy Kayla scene, you wanted to be free to laugh because yeah. it is really funny. I mean, that's the thing. Really I'm thinking good. about that scene because I'm like, that was my favorite comedy scene, okay. but it's a comedy game. There's not really like what a What is fun- your deal is so funny. Well, that's not a yeah. joke. Though. It's just like, what is your deal? <laughs> you know, it's just me yelling <laughs> well, at her. Well, sometimes the performance is what makes a joke and that performance oh, sure. is what makes the, a joke oh, for me. The for lady me. with the camera. Like, that's was another one. That was another she was one so where she funny. was just like, I was like, that, we just, love <laughs> casting. We love it. Yeah, because she was so good, and all the background in that scene were so good. They helped make the scene good yeah, because they, they were did. going, "Oh, oh!" When, when you know, it's yeah. like they're proposing. You no. know, no, he's not proposing. Yeah, yeah. Which, which helped Meg and I so much. Yeah. You know, Meg was loving it, and Jimmy's like, "Please stop." You know, it was like it really like helped turn the heat up. We, in general, background is almost a character in our show because of yeah. performance is such a big thing and her relationship to the crowd. Like in, in the beginning of the season, um, when she's her, she's barely making any jokes and the crowd is loving mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. they are a character. And yeah, so, yeah. so shout out to anybody who's done background for yeah. us on Hacks. Yeah. We really see you and we appreciate <laughs> you. you. my background artist. You are yeah. a big part of the show and we know it. Yeah, wow. especially when you're doing stand-up shows. Yeah. And there's a huge, you know. Yeah, it's that's like, like you they gotta, gotta sell the, they gotta sell it. Yeah. You know, yes. As much as Gene has to sell being a stand-up. Yeah. It's yeah. Really... Fake laugh and it's like a bad Oof. sitcom. Yeah. yeah. It, no. I think you can fake a tear more than a laugh. Mm-hmm. I think it's harder to fake a laugh. I you know? stick, you know. I would agree. Um, I want to put it out. You're not going to mm-hmm. tell me, but uh, season four, yeah. you're writing it right I'll now. Tell you. What mm-hmm. can you tell me? Like, I, tell me anything, tell anything. Of, as far as like a cool location you're going to okay. maybe get to go How to. About this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah. think this is kind of maybe exclusive. Okay. Oof. We okay. pick Jen's up on here. This is dangerous. And, yeah. on here. and it could change, but as, but of, as right of right now, right now. <laughs> that we pick up very soon after we left. Oh. Yeah. Mo- I think we can say that. Very Moment. soon after. Yeah. So. Ooh. So that's kind of fun. I'm trying to think of a cool. Well, one thing that I I think we can say because it's sort of baked into season three is that DJ's going to have a baby soon. 
So that's yeah. something we can say because sure. it's because yeah. that's, that's real. How, that's how the body works. Yeah, you know? it's like, like we know the timeline after, of pregnancies. After, after, and yeah, yeah. within nine months usually, yeah, yeah, a baby yeah. is born. It's almost so. closer to ten. At least was it was for me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Not to be sitting here with Virginia Ham being your three season damn near perfect show. Oh, but thanks. if I had to now ask for some bread, I know mm. you guys have a deal with Warner Brothers yes. and you maybe have more stories in you. Is there areas that you want to play in? I mean, you explored the world mm-hmm. of stand-up and mm-hmm. women that were sort of never given their due in Hollywood yeah. with, with hacks. Is there an area or a specific place that y'all would like to team up next to sort of talk about something? You know, I think in general, like, we aren't necessarily committed to, like, here's the idea. But I think for us, no matter what, it's always about, like, moving culture forward in some way. About sometimes, I mean, comedy first, almost always. But it's, like, about, you know, fostering empathy between people who were otherwise wouldn't have it, like Deborah and Ava. Or whether it was, like, on Broad City, which we didn't create, but we worked on, like, being, like, here's a female friendship that is the most important relationship in these people's lives. And that's felt different at that moment when it came out. So um, I don't know if, I mean, is there a specific talk that you want to shout out? We've been talking about sex a lot, actually. Uh So we've been thinking about that. (laughs) Um, Sorry, I was like, I don't know 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 where to go with it. I think think everyone does think about sex, but I think, yeah, for us, I think that there's a, it feels like there's almost like a a show about sex that maybe hasn't been done yet. And I think we're interested in that. I think it's interesting right now, just considering how much It's so interesting. There's an entire subsection of, I think, Mm -hmm. culture that is just like, no sex, never. I want it to be sanitized. Mm -hmm. And then there's like the people that watch Bridgerton. (laughs) Like me, or like love, or Uh, like again, like looking at the scene between Tony and Jean, and I'm just like, yes, this is like Rocky music is playing. And I think a show that brought both of those people in would be really interesting. Yeah, well, I think <laughs> well, that's it would not help the sanitized people. I We're don't care though. In that. They need to watch. <laughs> Sometimes I think the sanitized people, or the people that are like, no sex, like or like no superfluous sex, yeah. are usually like, why? But if there's a purpose, like I think in the golf episode, yeah. the fact that we're exploring power through sex, yeah. and then also the sex that Deborah has with Tony Goldwyn's character sort of like changes her perspective on the indiscretion her sister had in yeah. sleeping with a married man. Like it changes the whole season. Yeah, I didn't so talk I think about if, that, if yeah. you can find a way to like make sex titillating mm-hmm. but also purposeful, I think you might get the people who are like, I don't need to see it. Or like, well I get why we're seeing it. So this is why he's got an Emmy lady. I, I, I just I mean, had a I random idea wrong. he could make it into a show. I, I might be wrong. <laughs> Since uh, we're gonna wrap up here, but another thing you guys kind of are getting to shoot the moon on like wish list people that yeah. you get to bring in and involve this. Yes. Is there somebody that's on the like wish list bucket list that you would like to maybe? Because like I think bringing in Jay Smith Cameron from the yes, succession world and that was, world, that was so that was huge. Um, is there somebody like that that you're like wishing and hoping <laughs> and praying? That's a great question. <laughs> it's a great question. And we do get asked it sometimes. Yeah. I mean, this may not happen. I don't want to. Of course, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't want to like put you in blast. And be like, well, we I mean, sent listen, the, cash, the casting stick sheet out you, yesterday. Whether it's on hacks or or whatever, in just moving forward in life, we love Julia Louis Dreyfus. We always yeah, have. We always will. Yeah. So I guess that's a good sign. We love Olivia Coleman. Yeah. Oh my god. So one. she's hysterical too, by the way. So funny. Yeah. yeah. She is so funny. Um, yeah. We would love to work with Laurie Metcalf again. She oh, was weed yeah. in season two. Yeah. She was so funny. She yeah. is. Oh my Unbelievable. gosh. And that was, she was another person that we had talked about for a couple of roles. And then we were so lucky that when we were writing Weed, we were like, wouldn't it be amazing if Lori did this role? Mm. And then she did. So it was like the best. And to just name, I guess, a man. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. I mean, let's see. I, I'll say one man that I've always been like, that person that just seems so funny and good. And I've always loved to, I would love to work with is Jack Black. Oh, I yeah. love Jack so Black. Hey, there, Jack Black started on TV. There's an old episode of Picket Fences that he's in. Oh, oh wow. He was like a kid he, actor, right? Yes, cool. he was like a young no. actor, basically. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Like, like yeah. Mm-hmm. Kid was like... Picket Fences. Pop, picket Fences. Okay. That, I'm that deep. Also, his mom was like a genius, yes, right? Yes, his mom is like literally like a rocket a scientist. Astros- oh, yeah. Really? Yes. Who, like, I think like the day before he was born or something, like, figured out how to make space rockets work and handed it in and then had him like the next day. Yeah. Like mom's a literal rocket scientist. Yeah. Dang. Something like that. I mean, well, you can see it in his work. You can, you honestly can. You can see the allyship in him. Like you were yeah. raised by a strong that's woman. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's a man who will, will never be in trouble. Oh, you know who we love too? Martin Short. Love. Oh yeah. Sure I mean, look, and short. again, I think y'all can cast every single one of them. So I really I do know. hope that it happens. Oh, sure. Um, congratulations again on an absolutely incredible <laughs> season you. of Hacks, and we'll hopefully guys have you back. And good luck at the Emmys. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you all for watching the Awards Tour podcast, and we'll see y'all next time.